So have a look at this chart over here. I'll walk you through quickly. This red line over here is the 20 period moving average. The blue line is the 50 period moving average and the black is the 200 period moving average. Now let me ask you, which moving average should you use in this example? I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Well, the answer is this. You should be using none of it, right? Because clearly in this example, the market isn't respecting the moving average at all. So don't use it. Now, what about this chart over here? Which moving average should you be using in this instance? Would it be the red moving average, the blue one, or the black one? Want to know what's the answer? I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. The answer is this. You should be using the blue moving average. Why? I'll explain shortly in today's training. But if you are one of those traders who always wonder, man, Rainer, sometimes I use moving average, it works, sometimes it doesn't. Man, Rainer, how do I use moving average to better time my entry? Man, Rainer, moving average, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Hey, I just said that, right? So anyway, if you always, you know, feel conflicted with moving average, then today's training will help you with it and to help you master moving average. And that's not all because towards the end of this training, I'll even share with you a moving average trading strategy that you can use to you know, profit in bull and bear markets. And it works you know, for the forex markets, the crypto markets, and even the stock markets. Sounds good? Then let's get started. First, what is the moving average indicator about? Simply put, right, the moving average it's an indicator that calculates the average price over a fixed time period. So if you, let's say you have a 10 period moving average on your chart, it simply calculates right, the average price over the last 10 candles. So if you're on a, on a daily time frame, it calculates the average price over the last 10 days. If you are using a 50 day moving average, it calculates the average price over the last 50 days. So for example, you can see over here, this red line over here is the moving average. We are, in this case, it's a 20 period moving average. Okay, and one thing about moving average is that you'll notice it tends to follow the price, right, a bit with a, a lag. So you can see over here the price has declined lower and your moving average naturally is heading down lower as well. Over here the price is going up higher, naturally your moving average, right, is catching up with the price as well. So you might be wondering, you know, why does it happen, right? How, how does the moving average work? Let me explain. So the reason this happens is because, right, again, it calculates the average price, right, over a given time period. So let's say, for example, you have a five-day, a five-period moving average. And then let's say, for example, let's say Apple stock, right, you know what's, uh, you know the Apple company. Let's say the stock price, right, over the last five days, right, is uh, as follows, okay? So I'll walk you through. Let's say on day number one, Apple closed at $1. Day number two, it closed at $2. Day number three, it closes at $3. Day number four, at $4. And day number five, close at $5. Simple. Now, how do you calculate this five period moving average using the data that you have? Well, very simple. You just simply take the values, right, from day one to day five and divide by five. So in essence, what you do, right, if it's, in this case, it's, let's say it's a simple moving average, you just take one plus two plus three plus four plus five, add everything together, divide by five. And if my math serves me right, it will give you $3, right? So the five day moving average in this case is $3, okay? So just remember this number, hold it in your head for like five seconds. Next, let's say day number six, right? Apple stock closed at $6. Now, let me ask you, how do you calculate the five day moving average? How do you calculate the five period moving average? Now you have six values on your chart. Well, simply put, when you are dealing with moving average, you always take into consideration, right? The recent five days, right? The, the most recent five days. All right, so in this case, right? The most recent uh, closing price over the last five days is from this, 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 and this. So from here, all the way to here is the is the closing price right over the last five days you ignore this one because this will be uh, the recent six day and you, you are not dealing with the six period moving average but the five so what you do is again same thing two plus three plus four plus five plus six divide by five and what do you have you get the value is four okay in this case just one more example right so let's say day number seven apple stock price closed at seven dollar so how do you calculate the five period moving average let me give you three seconds one, two, three. Okay, again, same thing. You take the recent closing price over the last five days from here all the way to here. You add all this number together. Three plus four plus five plus six plus seven. Divide by five. Okay, and if my math serves me right, I believe the value is five. So if you, you just uh, remember the values earlier, this one over here, we had the number is three. Over here is four. So what happens is that on your chart, right? Imagine this is a chart. Okay, let's say this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. I hope my axes are correct, right? I left school a long, long time ago. So what happened is that, let's say this is zero, and then let's say, for example, here is, a, uh, let's say 100 for, or, or 10, right? So let's say at number three, it's here. Number four, let's say it's here, and number five, it's here. So what happens is that they will connect these dots, right, as lines on your chart, and that's how your moving average, you know, uh, you know, 
is you know shown up on your chart by calculating the average price over the last five days okay so again why do you have number three because you calculate the average price of the first five days over here the recent five days over here and the recent five days over here that's how you get three four and five then you just show up as a dots on your chart and you just connect the dots you'll show up as a moving average and of course naturally if your values right get smaller let's say five become four become two right then your moving average naturally you start to you know, a point down lower as well. Okay, so that's how your moving average works. Okay, now that you've understood, right, what a moving average is, right, the next question here is this, right, when do you use a moving average? Well, long story short, right, moving average works best during a trending market. And here's why, right, have a look at this chart. You can see that this market, market is uh, in a downtrend and don't worry if you're not familiar with trend. Later, I have a trading on identifying trends is going to be a powerful lesson right but for now just follow along with me you can see that this market is in a downtrend and the red line over here is the 20 period moving average and if you use this moving average right for this particular market condition you can see that you'll be able to spot right numerous trading opportunities right notice how the market bounce off over here once two times three times almost a fourth time fifth time almost a sixth time and these are all potential trading opportunities to you know short this market and ride the move down lower and this is powerful because you know if you're just a trader who can just who only relies on you know classical support and resistance so let's say for example this over here let's say it's a, a resistance you know this over here is resistance this is resistance this is resistance and you're waiting for the price to come back to resistance to come back to resistance you know to come back to resistance you will be disappointed because the price never came back to resistance it just continue to head down lower and this will be a miss opportunity right if you know you don't have additional uh, techniques in your toolbox right to trade the markets okay so this is powerful stuff another example this over here this is the 50 period moving average notice how the market right respects this uh, uh, particular moving average in this trending co market condition right that's the ones you know two times uh, three times you know four times five times right notice how the price you know bounces off the moving average nicely and later on i'll share with you right how to know which is the best moving average right to use right we should use the 20 should you use the 50 or should you use the 200 uh, more on that coming up later but for now i also want to talk about when not to use moving average right? look at this chart this is a perfect example of when not to use moving average when it's a range market because when the market is in a range you notice that whatever moving average you have on your chart the price will just you know slice through it right like a hot knife through butter right the price still comes in cuts through the moving average at a bounce head down lower then head up higher and cut through the moving average once again then collapse down lower cuts through the moving average once again heads up higher cuts through the moving average heads down lower cuts through the moving average heads up higher cuts through the moving average so you can see that during a range market right moving average is uh, not effective and you pretty much only want to use moving average when the market is trending so it's key right to actually be able to identify trends so now if you're not familiar with trends you have difficulty identifying trends right then pay attention to this So a market is said to be in an uptrend when it consists of a series of higher highs and higher lows. Like for example, market heads up higher, makes a pullback, heads up higher, makes a pullback, higher, makes a pullback, heads up higher. So you can see over here we have a series of higher highs. Let's call it HH. Higher high, HH. And then we have this higher low, higher low. Okay. Why is this called a higher low? Is because right, the low over here is higher than this previous low over here. And why is this called a higher low? It's because this low over here is higher than this previous low. Same thing, why is this called a higher high? Because this high is higher than this high over here. Does it make sense? So let's have a look at an example to see this in action. So if you look at this chart over here, this is what we call an uptrend, right? From left to right, market is heading up higher, an uptrend. If you look at the highs and lows, we have a series of higher high, a higher high, a higher high, higher high, higher high, 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 high and higher high. What about the lows? If you look at the lows, right, this would be the 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 first higher low, right? Because it's higher than this low, higher low. This is another higher low, another higher low, a higher low, a higher low, and a higher low. So you can see that when the market is in an uptrend, it will consistently form a series of higher highs and higher lows. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Rainer, you know, this is not as easy as it seems because there are times where I see the market is in an uptrend like this, then it goes down lower. And it continues up higher. So now, Rainer, let me ask you, Rainer, is this now in a downtrend because we now have a lower high and lower low? So that's a good question, right? Because in market structure, in an uptrend, you don't always get a series of higher highs and higher lows because there are times where the market can make a pullback. And within the pullback, right, the, the 
the market gets messy, it forms a lower high and lower low like what you're seeing over here. Or sometimes it could even do like, like this where your market goes up higher, then it chops up into a range, you thought it's going to be a reversal and then boom, it breaks up higher. So how do we know whether an uptrend is intact or not? So this is where I'm going to share with you, pay attention, right? Something really important. It's what I call, is this, right? Basically, an uptrend is invalidated only after the price breaks below the swing low that precedes the breakout. What do I mean by this? Okay, so let me give you an example. So if you look at an uptrend, okay, price goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up. So when we talk about the swing low, the swing low that precedes the breakout, we are actually referring basically to a major swing point on the chart. Now, when I talk about major swing point, it can be hard to decide. Like for me, I know this is a major swing point. This is a major swing point. This is a major swing point. But to new traders, they can't tell. So how do we know that's a major swing point is that you want to look at where did the market broke out previously. So you can see over here, previously, this was the breakout point, right? Over here, this is the highs and the market broke out over here. So this is the, the breakout point. Now, where is the swing low that precedes the breakout? The word precedes means before. Where is the swing low that happened before the breakout? So you can see that the swing low that happened before the breakout is this swing low over here. So in other words, right, this uptrend will be intact unless the market has break and then close below this swing low. Until that has happened, right, we would say that the uptrend is still valid and we are expecting higher prices to come. Okay, we would say the uptrend is only invalidated if it breaks below the swing low that precedes the breakout. Okay, so let me give you an example. So if you look at this chart over here, let me ask you, quiz time. Okay, I'll just make your life a little bit easier. This over here, right, is the high, okay? And when the market breaks out of this high over here, right, you want to ask yourself, where is the swing low that precedes the breakout? And then you have this swing low over here, okay? Now, when you look at this chart, right, you can see that now the market has actually break and close below this swing low, right? Yes, break and close below it. So my question to you is this, is this uptrend still intact or it has been invalidated? Five seconds, right? Think about this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the answer is this, is that the uptrend is actually still intact because it did not break below the swing low that precedes the breakout. Okay, this uptrend is still intact. So you can see what happened next is that this market, it did uh, dip down lower and then continue, dip down lower and then continue up higher. Because this is the swing low that you want to pay attention to. If, if only the market breaks and close below it, then we can say that, hey, you know, this uptrend is no longer intact and the market could possibly go into a range or reverse down lower. So remember, right? Uptrend is invalidated only after the price breaks below the swing low that precedes the breakout. Okay, so one more example. Look at this chart over here. At this point, the market has break below this low over here, has break and close below it. Let me ask you, is the uptrend still intact or has it been invalidated? Otherwise known as, otherwise uh, can be said that the uptrend is destroyed. Yeah? So what's your answer? Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the answer is this, right? So if you first and foremost find out where is the swing low that precedes the breakout, this is the breakout point. Right, this is the highs that we are referring to. So at this point, the market has break out of this highs. So where is the swing low that happened before the price breaks below this highs? This is the swing low over here. So at this point, you can see that the market did break below this uh, swing low. So at this point, this is where what I'll say, right, that the market, the trend is no longer intact, and it could possibly you know go into a range or even reverse down lower. Okay, now that you are able to identify trends like a pro, congrats, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> now, how do you actually identify the area of value, right? So area of value, okay, there's uh, one thing that you must have, right, which is this, right? The two test criteria. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. So over here, this is the chart of our euro against the US dollar. In this case, I've overlay with a 50 period moving average, as you can see on this blue line over here. So you can see that at this point in time, right, the market doesn't really seem to be respecting the moving average, right? Goes up, cuts through it, comes back, comes back down lower, goes up, comes back down lower. So what do I mean by the two test criteria? Very simple, right? Let's see what happens. So in this case, the market goes up and it pretty much bounces off the 50 period moving average. So this is one test over here, okay? So we're looking for at least 
two tests, right, for the market to kind of like confirm and tell us that, hey, he's respecting this moving average. I don't know what's the reason. Maybe there's some smart money, some institution, you know, paying attention to it. Maybe some lady got dumb, right, by her boyfriend on the 50th date and she hates the 50 period moving average and she always shot with huge size at the 50 period moving average. Who knows, right? But this is where you want to, you know, pay attention to for at least two tests. So we now already have one test, okay? And the way I define two tests, right, is that the market must break below the swing low, right, and retest it to classify a second test. So this means the market must come down lower, break below this swing low, and then head up higher and retest a second time, right? And only then will I consider this a second test. So let me just show you what I mean. So in this case, you can see over here, the market broke below this lows, okay? And now I'm waiting to see if it respects the 50 period moving average for a second time. Let's see. So in this case, you can see the market head down lower, and then, let's see. Yep, over here we got a second test. Okay, so of course I'm not gonna you know short this right now, right? Because I still want to see the market getting rejected here, right? To kind of like confirm there's at least two tests, right? So I'm waiting for the price to at least break below this lows, right? To kind of like confirm, hey, you know, there's at least two tests on this particular market. So let's see. So in this case, you can see the market consolidate a little bit, right? And then eventually break down lower. So now we have the two tests. Uh, technique which I shared with you, we tested once, it break down lower, retested a second time, right? Hit down lower, had a pullback, and then it collapsed down lower. So now I have two tests. Now, right, I can then look for potential trading op opportunities right, on this third test over here. So we'll talk about the strategy, the entries and exits later on, but for now, let's you know follow through with this. So you can see that the market over here, we did have a third test over here and the market starts to decline down lower. Then let's see what happens next. So you can see over here, market then break below this lows over here, and then we pretty much retested this here for fifth time, okay? And then let's see. And it breaks down below the low once again. And over here, we almost have another test. We can consider this a test because you know it's pretty close. And now we can see the market retested here once again. Now let me ask you, is this considered a test, right? It's not a trick question. Is this considered a test? So if you recall, right, earlier, my rule for the market to actually consider a test is that it must break below this swing low. In this case, it didn't. It just hit down lower. It did not break below this swing low before it retests here once again. So over here, I don't consider this a test because the price must break below the swing low for it to be considered a test. Okay, this concept might be relatively new to some of you, so I'm going to walk you through another example so you understand how it works. So in this case, right, I'm going to use the uh, 20 period moving average to identify my area of value. Of course, this is a cherry pick chart, right, because I know what's the end result ahead of time, but I'm just going to walk you through the top process, right, to identifying the two test uh, concept. So over here, you can see over here, right, the market has tested the 20 period moving average once, and then it hit down lower, as you can see over here, okay, and it also had broke below this swing low, okay, so let's see when the second test will occur. Market continues down uh, over here, lower slightly. Then it retests here a second time, right? Why is this considered a valid second test? Because notice the price actually took out below this low, so right, hit down lower, took out this lows, and then retests here a second time over here, okay? And of course, at the second time, right, we are not gonna short the market just yet because we have no idea whether it's gonna hold or not because the market fall, you know, it could just continue up higher. So we are waiting for the second test to only be confirmed when the price breaks below this swing low, right? So let's see if that happens. So in this case, the market did break below this swing low and now the second test is confirmed. So now we can look for trading opportunities, right? Should the market, right, retest to the, towards the 20 period moving average again. So again, let's see. In this case, the market just continued to grind down lower, head down lower and it's pretty far away from the 20 period moving average. So we are pretty much on the sidelines, right? And not, you know, uh, taking any position. And eventually the market, let's see, it came back over here, right? And give us a, a third test, right? So again, over here is potential a potential trading opportunity because if you look left on the chart, right? It has respected the 20 period moving average. Test the once, head down lower, come back a second time, head down lower. So now third time, what do you think? Do you think it's gonna head down lower? Well. I'll share with you later on, right, at the trading strategy section on how you can actually use the moving average, right, to help you better time your entries and exits. We'll talk about the specific entry triggers, the exits, uh, and, and much more, right? So for now, just pay attention and understand, right, how to actually identify that two test criteria so you know, right, that this particular market, right, has a good chance of respecting uh, the moving average. Yep.
Okay, now you might be wondering, so Rainer, which is the best moving average, man? You shared with me the 20 period moving average, the 50, you know, there's the 100, there's the 200, there's the 300. So which is the best one, man? Well, the answer is, there's no best moving average out there because it really depends on the type of trends you're dealing with. So for example, if you notice that the market is in a strong uptrend, right, it's in a strong trend, then usually, right, the 20 period moving average right, will be uh, more relevant for that market condition. So over here, you can see this is a strong trend. How do you identify a strong trend? Notice the depth of the pullback right, is usually relatively shallow. So you can see it heads up higher, it pulls back, then continues to head up higher, a pullback, heads up higher, pullback, heads up higher. So pay attention to the pullback. If you notice that it's relatively shallow, usually the 20 period moving average right, will be a uh, better fit for that kind of uh, market condition. Now, if you notice that the pullback is a little bit deeper, then this is what I call a healthy trend, and this is where the 50 period moving average will be more uh, applicable in this case. So notice the market heads up higher, it makes a deeper pullback, heads up higher, pullback, heads up higher, makes a deeper pullback, heads up higher, pullback, heads up higher, and right now making another pullback once again. So if you notice, again, market is, uh, has a slightly deeper pullback. This is where you can use the 50 period moving average. And in this market condition, it's what I call a healthy trend. And finally, well, if you notice that, oh man, Rainer, the pullback is really strong, it's really huge, then this is what I call a weak trend. And usually in a weak trend, you can use anywhere between 100 to 200 period moving average. This is where you notice that the pullback is really uh, pretty deep. So it goes up higher, it makes a steep pullback. Goes up higher, pulls back. Goes up higher, makes a steep pullback. Goes up higher, makes a steep pullback. Right. So in this case, you can actually use the twenty, or rather the two hundred period moving average to help you identify the area of value. So at this point, right, we have covered quite a bit about moving average. You know when to use it, which is the best one to use, how to identify your area of value. In the next section coming up, we're going to take all that you've learned, right, and to use it, right, to trade the market. So we are diving into the trading strategy section. We talk about the entries, the exits, and much more. So let's get started. Okay, this is the chart of FCX, Freeport McMoran. So this stock is pretty much in an uptrend. As you can see, the price making a series of higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, and higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So clearly, it's in an uptrend. So now that we know the, this stock is in an uptrend, then we can actually use the moving average indicator to help us identify the area of value. So let's, in this case, it seems like a healthy trend. I'll overlay with a 50 period moving average. So. Let me walk you through and identify the number of tests, right, so far, right? So it came, went up higher, one test, right? Then the market rarely up higher. I would say this is uh, close to a second test. Goes up higher, comes back down for a third test, goes up higher, and back here, we almost got this fourth test over here. So clearly, this market respects the 50 period moving average, and we can use this as an area of value to identify potential buy trading opportunities. And if you look a little bit closer, you notice that this market is also near the area of support, right? At the 50 period moving average. So this is what we call an, a stack area of value because number one, you have the 50 period moving average acting as an area of value here. Then you have this area of support, right? Which is near the 50 period moving average also acting as an area of value. So you have two areas of value which are kind of like coincide with one another. So this is what I call a stack. Right, because they stack on top of one another, a stack area of value. So this makes things right, the area of value even more powerful. So what am I looking for now? So what I'm looking for right, is pretty much an entry trigger to tell me that, hey, the buyers are stepping in and about to push the price higher. So what I'm looking for is for the price to come towards this area of value and then to quickly get rejected from it. So it comes into this uh, area of support, uh, breaking below the 50 MA and then quickly closing back above support. So this kind of like look like a, something like a, a false breakout, right? Because the price, it tried to break out below these lows, break down below these lows, but couldn't and then quickly rally back above this area of support. So this tells me that, hey, you know, the market tried to break down lower, but guess what? There's no one selling, right? That's why the market couldn't go down lower. Instead, what happened is that it actually, you know, rally and close back up above support. So this is a sign of strength and the market could possibly head up higher. So this is what I'll be looking for. Alternatively, you can also look for, you know, a bullish reversal candlestick pattern like a hammer. So comes into it, it forms something like a hammer showing you, you know, signs of strength. Again, this could be an entry trigger for you to go long. So let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market is approaching our area of value, our stack area of value. And then over here, we have this candle that looks somewhat like a hammer. Now, I'm not interested to go long just yet because, all right, over here, this is where the market, right, could be where previous, right, the price breaks 
below support where previous support could become resistant. So it might face some uh, selling pressure as it goes up higher and then continues down lower. So I want to see the market actually, you know, have a higher close, right? A conviction, a convincing close, right? Back above support, something like this. Okay, so let's see what happens. So in this case, the next candle, we have a nice close back above support. So this to me is what I call a false break. Notice the price, how the price comes into this area of support. It took out this lows, took out this lows, tried to break down lower, couldn't and quickly got rejected and closed back up above this area of support. So this is what I call a false break. And it's an entry trigger that you can use to get long on your trade. So let's say we go long on the next candle open, right? Let's say, let's say the candle open over here, right? Let's say our entry price, let's put it in green over here, right? So this is our entry price. Okay, I'll just change this to green. Okay, what about, okay, green is here. What about our stop loss, right? So I usually like to set my stop loss a distance below the uh, lows, right? So this means I like to set it, I don't want to set it just here because the market, for all you know, it could come down lower, hit my stops and then rally up higher once again. So how many times have you experienced that, right? Say me to yourself, all right? Yeah, don't worry, I can't hear you. Uh, so what I like to do is to actually set my stop loss right a distance right below support, a distance below the swing low. So my stop loss right usually is somewhere about here, right? So you can see it's a distance away from this lows over here. So to make it more objective, you can use a tool like the average true range indicator, such for ATR. Just click this default one. And I like to usually use the uh, 20 period ATR since there's about 20 trading days in a month. I go with SMA, click OK. Right, so find out what's the current ATR value. You can see that the current ATR value is 1.91. What this means is that over the last 20 trading days, right, this market or this stock moves an average of about $1.91. So what I'm going to do is to actually find out what's the low of this candle, right? Let's say the low of this candle is X minus, right, 191. Okay, and that will be my stop loss level. So what's the low? Let me go find out what's the low. The low of this candle, according to trading view, it's uh, 29.45. So I'll take 29.45, 29.45, okay, minus 1.91, which is shown over here. And I get 29.45 minus 1.91, 27.54, 54. okay. So that will be my stop loss level. Okay, so let's go and put my stop loss level at 27.54. Let's change this to rate, stop loss as 27. 0.54. Okay, so why 27.54? Very simple. What we just did is to identify the low of this candle, the extreme swing low, minus 1 ATR. And you know the 1 ATR value is 1.91. So we take this swing low minus 1 ATR and our stop loss is at 27.54. Okay, so green is entry, red is stop loss. What about targets? Well, you can set your target right in this instance. Let's keep things simple. Just before the recent swing high. So just before this high. Because again, if you look at this, this is where potential selling pressure could come in. Because hey, for all you know, this could be uh, resistance, right? Where selling pressure could come in. So if you're going to be conservative to just capture one swing, you can just look to take profits just before this recent swing high. So I'll just pull out this indicator, put it somewhere about here. I'll change this to blue to signal, right, that this is our target, right? So there you have it, right? So this is a potential uh, trading setup, right? Uh, let's say we got long on this green line, red is our stop loss, and let's see what happens next. I'll tell you what happened. The, mar the market reaches our target because this is a cherry pick chart. As you can see over here, eventually it reaches our target, and this, yes, it's a winning trade. Now let's move on, right? This is the chart of a dollar against the Chinese Yuan, and have a look at this trend over here. The overall market is in the downtrend. Now let me ask you, what type of trend do you think this is? A strong trend? A healthy trend or a weak trend? Three seconds. One to three. Well, the answer is uh, pretty straightforward. You can see that the depth of the pullback, they're all relatively shallow. Pulls back, heads down lower. Pull back, heads down lower. Pull back, heads down lower. So based on the look of this chart, right, I would say the market is likely to be in a strong trend. And that's where you can use the 20 period moving average to help you identify the area of value. So looking at which, right, notice how many times the market has tested the 20 MA. Tested once, head down lower. Tested twice, head down lower. Pulls back, tested three times, heads down lower. Pulls back, hits, uh, tested four times, heads down lower. So you can see that the market right, clearly respects the 20 period moving average right, in this uh, instance. And one thing to point out is that when you are trading or when you are dealing with a strong trending market, right, you will realize that you know you don't have much time to, I mean, you have time to make your decision, but at least if you're looking at the daily time frame, you realize that you've got to be fast because notice how the candle just come in towards this 20 MA and then quickly got rejected down lower. Then it pulls back towards the 20 MA and then quickly got rejected down lower. So if you are not 
paying attention, right? You realize that the market seems to, you know, move, right? Very quickly, you know, without you, you know, grabbing a piece of the move. So to kind of like slow time down, right? There's one trick that you can use and it's what I call uh, multiple time frames, right? Going down to a lower time frame to time your entry and you realize that you have more time, right? To actually help you better time your entry. So let's do just that. But before I do it, right? This over here, I want to highlight this area because this is an area of value, right? The price testing, the 20 MA over here. So let's draw this and highlight this as an area of uh, resistance over here, okay? So now, once that I have that, right, I will go down to a lower time frame, to the 4-hour time frame and see what the market shows me. Okay, so on this time frame, I'll just remove the 20 MA, okay? So over here, this time frame, just to walk you through quickly, this area of resistance is the same area of resistance you saw on the daily time frame where the 20 period moving average is at. So now the market on this four hour time frame, it now seems to be kind of like in a range like this, okay? So now to trade this little mini range, the uh, setup, the entry trigger I'm looking for is very straightforward. I want to see the price come towards this area of value, this area of resistance, and then quickly get rejected and close back below resistance. This tells me that, hey, the market tried to break out higher, but there's no buying pressure to push the price up higher. Instead, what you have is you know, selling pressure coming in, and that's why the market closed below resistance. So this is what I'm looking for. The price quickly you know, spike above resistance and then collapse down lower. Alternatively, you could also get uh, a reversal candlestick pattern like a shooting star. Price comes up higher, and then you have a shooting star pattern like this. Tr price tries to break out higher, right, showing you the upper shadow, only to close near the lows of this time period. So that's another uh, entry trigger that you can use to go short. So let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market hits down uh, lower, closing back at the same price. I'll go faster a little bit, right? Market then start to hit up higher with a bearish close on this candle. Then it eventually start to break out above resistance and close back below it. So you notice the last two candle. On this candle, you have this uh, sort of a, a breakout, nice strong looking hammer to break above resistance, right? Took out the highs, right? And then on this candle, you can see that we had a follow through initially. Price took out this highs and this highs, but within the same candle, the same four hour candle, the market pretty much got rejected and closed near the lows of this uh, four hour candle. So what does this tell you? It tells you that, hey, the buyers tried to break out higher couldn't find any more energy to push high. Instead, the sellers came in to control and push the price closing near the lows of this uh, candle. So this to me is a valid entry trigger to go short. So what I'll do is again, I'll look to go short on the next candle open. So let's say the next candle open over here. All right, this is to signal my short entry in green. Okay, I'll just change this to green to signal the entry. And then, right, uh, for stop loss again, I like to set it one ATR above this high. So I'm not doing the calculation, you should really be familiar with it. If not, just you know rewind back a little bit and watch how I did it earlier. So my stop loss will pretty much be somewhere about here. Okay, I'll just change this to rate. Now what about target, right? So in this case, since you know that the overall market is bearish on the daily time frame, right? You can have actually multiple targets in this case. So my first target will be pretty much, let's say over here, right? Below this, area, just above this area of support. I'll just change this to blue for my first target. Okay, my secondary target can be a little bit more uh, further away since I know that I'm trading in the direction of the longer term trend. If you look at the daily, we are pretty much trading in the direction of the longer term downtrend. So in other words, oops, in other words, since this is a downtrend, there's a good chance the market will break below this low and continue down lower by a little bit. So I can actually use this piece of information and set a further target to kind of like maximize my profits. Okay, so let me share with you how I would go about setting my second target. So back to the four hour time frame. Okay, my first target is over here. I'll just remove this box right, so to, to declutter it a little bit. So another technique that you can use to set your second target is what I call a price projection technique. So what you're trying to do in essence right, is to measure the range over here from this highs to this lows, right, from here to here. Let's say, for example, for simplicity sake, let's say it's 200 pips, okay? So what you want to do, right, is then from this lows, right, you project down lower lower by another 200 pips. So you literally copy from here this range and project it down, down lower and that will be your secondary target. So to make your life easier, you can use a tool like this, the trend-based FIP extension. You draw this from this high to the low and back up to this high again, okay? So you can see over here, I draw it from this high, to this low over here, and then back up to this high again, okay? And then, you can look at the 2.0. The 2.0 is where I want you to pay attention to, okay? The 2.0. So you can see over here, this is the 2.0 level over here, all right? So basically, what this indicator does at 2.0, what it tells you is that from this highs to this lows, right? Let's say this is, again, just to make this simple. Let's say it's 200 pips, okay? 
what it does is that from this low then, it project down lower by another 200 pips. Right, so this is the level that you want to pay attention to. In this case, it's at 6.44. Okay, so my second target, right, I'll just put it slightly above 6.44. Right, let's put it somewhere about here. And this one will be my, let's say, my second target. So let's see what happens next in this case. Okay, so in this case, you can see that the market, uh, I'll just remove this one so you can see how the price action unfold. Okay, so this is my first target. This is my second target. Okay, so in this case, the market pretty much... Uh, went a little bit against me, start to move forward in my direction, okay, then starts to head down lower at this point, right, most traders are thinking, hooray, right, who's your daddy, I knew, right, I knew it was going to happen, right, then the market starts to head down lower, eventually starts rallying back against us, they start to wonder, man, you know, should I take profits now, what if my open profits, you know, evaporate, what if I, you know, I got nothing out of this trade, no, let me just exit and break even, right, phew, all right, no, right? You already have a plan, follow your plan, right? Don't give in to your emotions, right? You have a plan, stick to it after all, you know? You want to stick to your plan. If you, you know, deviate against from it, right? Deviate against from it, then deviate away from it, right? Then your actions is going to be inconsistent. And when your actions are inconsistent, guess what? Your results will be inconsistent. So if you don't want that, follow the plan, right? So let's go. So in this case, we follow the plan and eventually we reach our first target. Booyah, right? So yeah, we got our first target. So Let's fast forward a little bit. Eventually, we reach our second target here as well. So, yep, this is a, it's a winning trade as well. And, of course, this is a cherry pick chart because it's going to be easier for me to actually illustrate my concepts, right, by, you know, picking a cherry pick chart. Okay, let me walk you through this uh, next trading strategy, right, using moving average. So, you can see this market is dollar against the Chinese yuan. Again, some context. Previously, the market was in a downtrend, okay, price making a series of lower lows and lower highs. And then recently it broke out of this accumulation stage. So notice how the market got into a range over here, okay? Many traders thought the range will likely break down lower, but guess what? It did it pretty much break out higher, okay? So as you can see, right, this, right, this breakout could potentially be the start of a new uptrend. So previously, we have this downtrend, accumulation stage, and this could possibly be the start of a new uptrend. So how can you get a low risk entry, right? And then to hop on board, the start of this new trend so you can you can imagine right the potential risk to reward over here can be pretty favorable you know like risking a dollar to make three four five dollars or more okay and this is how again right the moving average can help you but first right at this point right i won't recommend buying over here because there's just simply no logical place for you to to set your stop loss yeah so if you want to set your stop loss i would say the nearest logical one is to reference this swing low and if you like me right set it a distance below this lows one atr below it your stop loss is somewhere here so from your entry point here to your stop loss over here you can see that it's a pretty done wide stop loss and if your stop loss is so wide this means that the market has to move this much right from here to here right it has to move this much in your favor just to allow you to earn one hour right on your trade so what you can do instead is what I call the first pullback. Why is it called the first pullback? Because over here is the breakout point. And if it does make a pullback, this is kind of like the first pullback, right? After the breakout, right? So in this case, I like to overlay with the 20 period moving average. What is the 20 period moving average for? Simple, right? This is for the, for the uh, moving average right, to slowly catch up higher and for the price to come and retest the 20 MA, to touch the 20 MA. Why is that? Because as it touched the 20 MA, right, this means the pullback has occurred, right? It has uh, enough time to kind of like, you know, uh, gather energy, to gather strength, and to stage the next wave up higher. So if you can retest back towards the 20 MA, and if it does break out higher, there'll be kind of like, I would say, energy, right? To continue up higher. Because, you know, when you run, right? You know, let's say you're sprinting. You can't sprint, you know, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, non-stop. You need to rest, right? After you sprint 100, 200 meters, you rest for like, you know, 10, 20 seconds or a minute, right? or a minute, right? If you're like, you know, not so uh, fit, right? And then you sprint again. So same thing for the markets. When the market breaks out higher, you know, with strength, it can't go up forever. It needs to take a break. It needs to rest. So that's in the form of a pullback. So we're looking for a pullback towards the 20 MA, right? To show that he has rested enough before we want to look to, you know, get on board the trade and catch the next sprint up higher. Yeah, so what I'm looking for is for the market to retest the 20 MA. So let's see. So in this case, you can see over here, uh, 20 MA is slowly catching up to price, but not yet. So again, I'll, you know, be patient, stay on the sidelines and wait till it retests the 20 MA. So in this case, over here, it has now retest the 20 period moving average. So, so I'll share with you two techniques, right, that you can 
enter a trade. The first technique is again, we can use multiple time frame technique. You can go down to a lower time frame, like the four hour time frame. And over here, you notice that you have a price rejection. So to, to be honest, right, this is the previous resistance, 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 which became support over here. I'm not really convinced, right? Of this, uh, this bounce up over up high, higher. So what I'll look for is on this time frame, if it happens is that I'll look for a bounce up higher and look for another retest down lower of this lows and then to get rejected and close back above this area of support. So this could be something like in the form of a hammer. When this happens, right, I'll be looking to enter again on next candle open. My stops will go a distance below the lows. Again, possible target could be just before the recent swing high as your first target. Okay, so that's option number one. Second option right, is this, right, on the daily time frame, again, okay, so this is the second option. Again, the price has retested the 20 MA. So this is a more, I would say, a more, a slightly more passive approach. You can actually look, right, to trade the breakout of this recent swing high. So again, you can just simply go with a buy stop order. Let's say we place it above this highs. Let's change this to green. That's our entry. Okay, so the moment, let's say the moment the price goes up higher, let's say the moment goes up higher and it touches this green line, we automatically get long, okay? And what's uh, different now is that you can actually reference this swing low to set your stop loss. So previously, you're, you're referencing this swing low, which is very far away from your entry. So now, instead of, you know, using this swing low to set your stop loss, you can now reference this one over here. So this gives you a tighter stop loss, which improves your risk to reward on the trade. So let's say your stop loss is somewhere here. Just change this to red. Okay, great. And now what about target? So for this, right, I usually like to go with a trailing stop loss. Why is that? Because if you look at this, you zoom out a little bit, as I've shared earlier, you can see that this market previously was in a downtrend. Then we had this accumulation stage price break out of it, made a pullback, and now if it breaks up higher, right, and if the trend continues up higher, right, you don't want to have just a one-to-one -one risk to reward on the trade because you're going to be leaving a lot on the table. So how you can go about trailing or stop losses, there are numerous techniques. You can use uh, moving average, for example. You can use uh, price structure, for example. So I'll briefly walk you through both techniques. So for moving average, it's, it's very simple. All right, so in this case, what you can do is that you can use, uh, let's say, for example, 50 period moving average to trail or stop loss. So let's say if your entry get triggered, okay, let's say over here you got triggered, go long, right? You can then overlay with the 50 period moving average to trail or stop loss. So let's say if I overlay for 50 MA, right? You will only exit the trade, right? If the price closes below the 50 period moving average. So I'll just fast forward a little bit, right? Right, you can see over here, price continues to head up higher and the 50 period moving average is continuously, you know, heading up higher as well. So you only exit the trade, right? When the market again comes down lower, and breaks and close below the 50 period moving average. So imagine it's the 50 MA, right? If it breaks and close below it, then you exit the trade. So that's uh, one method. Another method that you can use is what I call the price structure is that you can actually continue to hold the trade until the market makes a series of lower lows and lower highs. So for example, right now it's continuously making you know, a higher high, higher high, and higher low. So you continue to go up higher until it makes a lower low and lower high like this. You have a lower low, and a lower high at this point, then you exit the trade, right? So there are two different techniques that you can use to trail a stop loss. Okay, so in this case, let's say we just go with the 50 MA. Uh, this is the result, right? Just fast forward a little bit. Actually, I don't really need to show you the end result because it's the process is what matters, not really the result of this particular trade. Okay, just one last uh, example before I let you off, shall we, right? Sounds like, you know, giving a lesson to kids, right? Okay, you may go for your recess right now, yeah. So anyway, this market, again, uh, euro against the US dollar, you can see the market overall is in a downtrend. Quiz time. Is this a strong, healthy, or weak trend? Three seconds. One, two, three. Well, uh, in my opinion, okay, this seems to be more of a healthy trend, right? You look at the depth of the pullback, right? So it's much, uh, a little bit more deeper. Then it hits down lower, pullback, hits down lower, pullback, hits down lower. So usually in, uh, I see this type of price action on the chart, this type of uh, trending market, I usually overlay with the 50 period moving average to see whether the market respects it or not. So overlay with the 50 MA, ding, okay? So this is how it looks like. So you can see that the market, in this case, clearly respecting the 50 MA. Tested once, heads down lower. Pulls back, tested twice, heads down lower. I won't really consider this a test since, since it didn't break below the lows. Then heads down lower, tested here a third time, hits down lower and back here for a fourth time, hits down lower and maybe here a fifth time and hits down lower. So that you can see, right, the, the game plan is really starting to formulate in your head. Okay, this is could possibly happen, right? Let me pay attention to that area of value and look for a valid entry trigger to go short. So again, if you look at this also, notice this is an area of uh, value right, where previous, previous 
resistance, all right, previous support, right? Previous support, 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 break below support could become resistance, right? And on top of it, you have the confluence of this uh, 50 period moving average. This is what I call a stack area of value because your 50 MA coincides with this area of resistance. Nice, okay, so let's see what happens next. So in this case, again, I'm looking for an entry trigger to go short over here. This could be something like, you know, a, a shooting star pattern price comes up higher then quickly get rejected and close back below this area of resistance, closing below the 50 MA. So let's see what happens next. So in this case, market goes up higher, stall a little bit, starts to, you know, hit higher again. Now, whoa, huge candle, right? So again, uh, waiting to see. Now the price is already at my area of value, waiting to see if I have a valid entry trigger to go short. Boom, right? Okay, I have this red candle over here. This is what uh, traders, I think those of you who are familiar with candlestick patterns, what we call a dark cloud cover. So you can see that uh, this candle here is bullish, but the next candle, right, we have sellers stepping in, right, and push the price down lower, closing near the lows of a day. Okay, so uh, traders could use this as an entry trigger to go short. But to be honest, I kind of prefer uh, something stronger, right, a stronger bearish reversal candlestick pattern. So let's say I, I didn't go with this. I'll skip this one. Let's see what happens. Market then hit down lower and it start to regret. Ah, man, I should short this market. Ah, I feel like an idiot right now. Well, don't be, right? There's always the opportunities, right, just around the corner. Yeah, so the market then starts to break out. I mean, rather come into this area of value once again. And then boom, right? <laughs> I very much prefer this as an entry trigger, right? Two reasons. Number one, okay, the market took out this highs, okay, and then quickly reversed down lower. And this reversal, right, is, uh, this pattern is, I would say, is much stronger than this one. Notice here, you have still this, uh, this lower wick signaling slight buying pressure, whereas this one over here, little to no uh, lower wick. So, you know, can see that the selling pressure, I would say, it's stronger in this sense, right? And on top of it, you have this, uh, comes like a false break of this highs as well. So, sweeter. So what I'll do is again, right, uh, another thing to point out again, okay, before I talk about the entry, is that notice, right, the market has actually break above the 50 period moving average by quite a little bit, and then, you know, starts to hit down lower. So this is perfectly normal in the real world of trading. In the real world of trading, it rarely comes to the moving average touch, you know, to the tick, right, and then bounce away. Sometimes it could come close enough, and then quickly reverse. Sometimes it could come towards the moving average, breaks below it, give you a false breakout signal, and then reverse away from it. So again, uh, you have to you know be prepared for this scenario. So this scenario is where the price pretty much breaks out of the moving average, and then it starts thing, starting to show signs of reversal once again. I'll look to enter again on the next candle open. So let's see what happens next. Next candle, okay. This is where I'll look to go short on next candle. Let's say my entry is green. Okay, stop loss again, usually one ATR above the high, somewhere about here is my stop loss, okay. I'll just change this to red. And for target, I can just take profit, I'll say, first target, right, could be just bef before this recent swing point, recent swing low, let's just blue, blue color, okay? Okay, so you can see, right, this is my, my first target just before this recent swing low, this is my entry, this is my stop loss. Let's see what happens next. What do you think? Is this going to be a winning trade or losing trade? Three seconds. One, two, three. Let's find out. So you can see over here, market starts to go down in my favor. Booyah! That's what I'm talking about. Start to stall a little bit, but overall still, you know, had a lower close, not too bad. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. At this point, right, I think most traders are really hyped up, right? They're probably, you know, counting the profits in their mind. All right, I'm going to buy a new loaf of bread. <laughs> then almost reaching my target, right? Hey, wait a minute, what's going on, man? Now the market is back to your entry price. So you start to sweat, start to panic. But remember, Rainer says, follow the plan, follow the plan. Don't, you know, be itchy fingers and you know, exit and break even because, you know, guess what? If you have inconsistent set of actions, you're going to get inconsistent <gasps> results. Okay, so let's see what happens next. We stick to the plan. And in this case, market now you know, starts to make us you know, really uncomfortable. We are, we have seen right, our profits now become losses. Ah, sweat. In this case, our market starts to show again signs of reversal. Maybe, you know, uh, lady luck is shining on us. Let's see. And boom, right? We get stopped out of the trade. Well, guess what? You did well. If you get stopped out of this trade, you did well because you followed the plan. And the reason why I'm sharing with you this losing trade is because losers will happen right from time to time in trading in fact it could be you know uh, pretty often as well when you encounter a series of losing trades so this is just to kind of like bring you back to reality you know whatever i share with you right it's not the holy grail you're not going to have a, a 90 or 100 percent winning rate you have winners you have losers but hopefully in the long run when you trade with an age right you can become a consistently profitable trader and hope this moving average tool that i've shared with you today can help you do just that and of course if you want to level up your trading you want to learn more about our different trading strategies and techniques right today we talk about moving average but there's also another one right uh, which is what we call candlestick patterns right very useful to help you time your entry so go down to my website over here uh, tradingwithrainer.com okay just scroll down a little bit right click this orange button right and uh 
I'll send this guide to your email address for free. So this is where you learn all the different candlestick patterns, how to better time your entries, exits, right? And even, you know, kind of like predict market turning points. So get a copy of this guide. It's absolutely free. So with that said, right, I wish you good luck and good trading. I will talk to you soon.